Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at introducing capacitors, storing charge and we'll finish with a summary. In the first part of this video we're going to introduce a new circuit element called a capacitor. We've seen that for a current to flow in a circuit, the circuit must contain no gaps that will disrupt the flow of conducting electrons. So here we have a circuit with some battery or potential difference across it. And in this circuit, a flow of electrons carries a current around the circuit. However, a current can still flow in an incomplete circuit containing two metal plates with an air gap connecting the circuit. So again, here we have a battery pack and an air gap set up in the circuit between two metal plates. And it turns out that current can still flow through the circuit. This setup of a pair of plates with an insulator such as air in between is an example of a capacitor. A capacitor is an electrical device consisting of two metal plates separated by an insulator. So here's a diagram of a capacitor with two metal plates separated by an insulator. In circuit diagrams, we use a circuit symbol to represent a capacitor. And this is the circuit symbol that you would see in a circuit diagram. The insulator separating two plates in a capacitor is often known as a dielectric and some examples include air, paper and ceramic. So this insulator can be made of anything from ceramic to paper to air. Capacitors can come in different shapes and sizes but most function in the same way as the parallel plate capacitor. So here are some drawings of differently shaped and sized capacitors. And here's our usual parallel plate capacitor. We're now going to think about the function of a capacitor, and capacitors are used in circuits to store charge. One plate of a capacitor becomes negatively charged, and the other plate of the capacitor becomes positively charged. When a capacitor is connected to a power supply such as a battery, the electrons flow from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal of the battery. So here's a power supply such as a battery, and here's our capacitor. And we know that electrons are going to flow around the circuit from the negative terminal, to the positive terminal. The capacitor plates are insulated, meaning that electrons cannot travel across the gap. So here the flow of electrons is impeded by the gap. They cannot flow across it. So as the electrons flow around the circuit, they are therefore deposited at one plate, plate B, and removed from the other plate, plate A. So because the capacitor plates are metal plates, they can supply electrons to the circuit. So electrons will be removed from plate A, and deposited on plate B. Plate A becomes deficient in electrons, acquiring a positive charge. So plate A gains a positive charge, which we'll call plus Q. Meanwhile, plate B is gaining electrons, which means it's gaining negative charge. So plate B becomes negatively charged, and it's going to have the same magnitude of charge as plate A, which is Q, but it's going to be negative. Now, charge is conserved within the circuit. If a certain amount of charge flows into any point, the same amount will flow out, and so the current is the same at all points. So because of the principle of charge conservation, the current is the same throughout the circuit. So if we test the current at any point in the circuit, it's going to be the same. So the charge that accumulates onto plate B is therefore the same as the charge that leaves plate A, giving the two plates equal and opposite charge. So because the same flow of electrons occurs onto plate B, as the flow of electrons that moves away from plate A, the charge deposited on plate B must be equal and opposite to the charge that leaves plate A. And this results in a potential difference forming across the two plates. So the different amounts of charge on plates A and B, because of the flow of electrons away from plate A and onto plate B, sets up a potential difference. Once the potential difference across the two plates is equal to the EMF of the battery, the current in the circuit falls to zero. So the battery supplying our circuit has a certain EMF, which we'll call epsilon, and there's going to be a potential difference set up across our two plates, A and B. And when the potential difference across the plates becomes equal to the EMF of the battery, then the current is equal to zero in the circuit. So no more current can flow. And no current can flow since there is no net potential difference between the positive battery terminal and A or the negative terminal and B. So remember A is the positively charged plate and B is the negatively charged plate. And when the potential difference across the battery is equal to the potential difference across A and B, there's going to be a potential difference of zero between the positive terminal and A 
and of zero between the negative terminal and B. And this means that the current is equal to zero in the circuit. And now at this point, we say the capacitor is fully charged. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or buy smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.